Greetings, and here's today's big find. Uh, while out roaming the back roads for bargains, I turned up a what appears to be a 74 Fender Deluxe Reverb in fairly decent uh, original condition. Now, I have not touched this thing uh, with a screwdriver or even really looked real hard at it. I thought I would share that experience with you. Okay, it's fresh off the truck about five minutes ago. So uh, let's go inside, take it apart, see what's good and bad about it. See if old Uncle Doug took it in the shorts or if I made a good buy. And then we will set about to restore this thing and test it and make it just as good as it can be. Okay, so stay tuned. Are we excited about the new Deluxe Reverb? Uh, I guess not so much. First off, it's past the most important initial test, and that's Rusty's sniff test. Uh, he sniffed all around and didn't bark or try to attack it, so I guess uh, so far so good. Now let's take a look at the outside. Uh, the Tolex appears to be in excellent condition. I don't see any of uh, the white spots, which makes me very nervous. Uh, I'm kidding here, of course, but it's almost a prerequisite for any old fender amplifier to have white paint spots on top. The chassis straps are a little rusty, a little bit of corrosion on the handle, just exactly what you expect. This might be a little overboard. Um, looks great. I don't see any cigarette burns. The dashboard's not bad for a silver face. I'm sorry for the glare, but you can see there are some little scratches and discoloration, but all the printing is there. Uh, the knobs are all original and nice and clean. Um, I'm kind of pleased with the looks of it. The screws are rusty on the fender, and this came from an area, a desert area. So when I see screws like this and all, I wonder if this wasn't stored like in a barn or someplace that was kind of moist. Uh, Girl cloth has one little hole in it right there, but otherwise, very, very presentable. Well, here's a rear view, and it looks, if anything, better than the front. Okay, both the back doors are present with the original screws. It's got the silver face type of heavy power cable with the grounded red plug. Okay, let's go down the control panel here. Strange, this is uh, like a home reduction switch, I believe, which you wouldn't think you'd need with a three-wire plug. I looked in here. This is a little hint. It says 2 amp fuse. It's got about a 3 and a half amp fuse in here, which can be a bad sign. Uh, if it's been blowing 2 amp fuses, there may be a partial short or something in the chassis, and they resorted to uh, higher value fuses. Either that, or they just got lazy and used what they had on hand. Um, on a standby switch is a really nice old uh, speaker uh, plug here, sort of a phenolic plug. Vibrato pedal, unfortunately the pedal's not here, they rarely are. Um, got the nice shielded uh, reverb cables, the all-important Underwriter uh, Laboratories sticker. Okay, um, to prevent electric shock, do not remove chassis. We'll have to follow that advice. Makes them harder to work on when you don't remove them, but I guess it's worth it just to play it safe. Okay, let's pull the back doors and see what we got. Here's another little tip while I'm removing the back doors. Look at the screw heads. They don't look like there's been uh, screwdrivers used on them before, so it's a good sign. Uh, it means there's probably a better chance that it ha this thing hasn't been worked on by drunken chimpanzees, okay? So, let's keep going. Here's another good sign. Uh, the lower back door was sort of stuck to the cabinet, uh, like it hadn't been removed. Uh, maybe not ever, okay? Uh, some of the contact cement uh, or a little bit of corrosion from the screws was uh, holding the door to the rear. See a little bit of moisture evidence here. But once again, I'm getting uh, more and more excited that this has not been molested. Well, the floor here is really clean. Uh, there is a reverb tank in the bag. I'm not sure if it's the original one or not. Let's hope. Um, it's loose at one end. Uh, we'll have to see why. Um, the other end is anchored. Okay, now let's start taking a closer look here. We've got a speaker. It's an Alnico uh, P12Q speaker. So it's going to be a Jensen. Let me see if I can get up here for the numbers. 220 Jensen. A 614, which would be 66, 76, 
Uh, since I believe this is a 74 amp, it would appear that this speaker might have been changed. Uh, we'll have to see. I've got to say though, if they did change it, they did a really nice job because uh, there are no uh, flies on a, a Jensen P12Q. It needs its little sticker here to make it look official. Uh, you can get perfect reproductions, which I probably will do. I see no damage to the speaker cone, but as my subscribers will tell you, that doesn't always uh, mean much. Uh, when you look at the front of it, uh, they could have put masking tape or God knows what on it. So I'm going to withhold my judgment on this speaker till I actually get it out and take a look. Uh, there's the chassis ID number, A40, which would imply uh, it's from 1974. We look inside at the tube chart, which I'm going to glue down those loose ends so that more damage doesn't occur to it. But if you look down at the end, it says 5U4. Okay, if it has the 5U4 rectifier, then that would be the AB868 chassis. Uh, I prefer the GZ34, which is the AB763 chassis. Uh, the GZ34 is like the greatest, uh, in my book, the greatest rectifier ever made. You're seeing some nice spider web action here. But since Halloween's coming up, I guess that's appropriate. Then, lo and behold, a GZ34 rectifier. Now, I'm going to have to check. I hate to admit it, but I'm not sure if, if it's just a direct replacement for a 5U4. I'm going to have to do some checking on that. Um, let's see, we got some uh, groove tube 6V6s that uh, ostensibly have been biased. We've got our chain of uh, smaller tubes here. And you notice that missing shield? Well, look what I found in the bottom behind the reverb tank. Some days, you just can't, things just can't go wrong for you. Okay, also I found this in the bottom, 12AT7. Uh, just like an archaeologist when you're excavating, the 12AT7 is the tube that drives the reverb. Now, I have plugged this in, and I have tried uh, to use it, okay, to test it. And uh, the, uh, both the clean and the vibrato channel will work. Uh, and you get pretty good tone, but when you first plug it in and turn it on, there's a horrendous bunch of loud, sharp, static, and popping sounds. Now, what I think that is, is a short in a screen resistor. And for that reason, until I get in there and check it out and fix it, I'm not going to plug it in again for fear of doing some harm to a tube or some other component. So uh, I hope you can be patient with me. But... Um, for now, uh, we're not going to turn it on, okay, to hear what it sounds like. Uh, also, the reverb and the tremolo did not work. So it seems uh, pretty apparent that the 12AT7 tube that somebody sprung for a new RCA tube, a little bit of spider web, um, they were trying to fix that reverb. So I'm not the first one to notice that the reverb didn't work. Okay, of course, the person I bought it from was shocked to find out that the tremolo and reverb didn't work. It's, it kills me how people, they know darn well what's wrong with stuff, but they sit there quietly hoping you never figure it out. Okay, so uh, here's where we stand. Uh, the transformers all look legit, although I'm going to have to pull this chassis and take a look at the numbers. Uh, we've got our filter capacitor can back here. Uh, God knows what awaits us underneath that. But... I have to say, all in all, this is about as nice as you could ever ask for, for an old amp out of storage. Uh, seems completely unmolested. Uh, the one seemingly missing part was laying in the bottom. Uh, I enjoy fixing these things, so I'm not going to say it's a bonus that the reverb and tremolo don't work, but it's not breaking my heart. Okay, so um, let's uh, pull out this chassis and take a quick look at it. And then we're going to bring this video to an end and move on to chapter 2 and 3 in which the amp is fully uh, restored and brought back to good working condition. Okay? Okay, here's a quick tip. Um, you notice how so many of these silver face and black face uh, dash panels are all bent up, especially at the top. Here's what happens. They put in this shield at the top and it droops a little bit from the top of the cabinet and hooks behind that dash panel. So what you have to do, uh, you can yank and pull and, and hit it with hammers if you want 
and you're going to bend the dash panel outward at the top. I know you've seen this. What you do instead is you take a putty knife like this and insert it between the top of the uh, dash panel and the with the uh, shield on the other side of it and just run it up and down and push the shield away from the dash panel and it will slide right out. Otherwise, God help you and the dash panel. Well, here's the top of the chassis and it looks wonderful. Uh, I checked the numbers on all the transformers and everything checks out. Uh, the power transformer is 025130, which is the same as a 125P23B. That's correct. The filter choke is a 022707, which is a 125C3A. That checks out. Uh, this is the output transformer. It's an 022640, which is the same as a 125A1A. Correct. And down here is a little reverb driver, uh, which is an 022921, which is the same as a 125A20B. So transformers are all correct. Also, you can look at the screws at the bottoms of them, and you can tell they've never been changed. Okay, um, nice big power transformer with the flux bands. So the top looks great. The uh, little doghouse here with the filter capacitors doesn't look like it's ever been removed, so um, I'll go in and check those. Let's flip it over and take a look inside. Well, here's the inside of the chassis, and yes, it has been out and it has been worked on. Uh, up here in the biasing uh, circuit, somebody's replaced one capacitor. Uh, you can see down here in the uh, tremolo section where they have done some soldering and tried to, either they did repair it or they attempted and couldn't repair it. It doesn't work now. Maybe something else is wrong. They put in an orange drop capacitor there. Uh, I really have no use for optical tremolos. I just despise them. If you've got a tube that's oscillating, why not use that for your tremolo instead of making a light bulb flash from it? Uh, it just doesn't make sense to me. It's like a real over-engineering. The other thing that they've replaced is right down here a cathode bypass capacitor. And also remember the hint I gave you about lifting the shield? Well, they didn't do that. So see right here where they bent the panel away in a couple places? Uh, this is exactly where it was holding up on me, but if you go in there with your putty knife, you'll prevent this, because it's, it's kind of hard to bend it back. Okay, so, um, yes, it's been worked on, but not heavily, and it does not look like it was really amateurishly done. So I think we've got a really nice chassis here uh, to work with. Okay, pull the reverb tank. It's an original Accutronics tank, and it is dated... Uh, April of 1974 and everything looks wonderful on the outside. Uh, let's take a look at the inside. Well the tank looks like it could pass for new. It's absolutely perfect. Even the base was just immaculate on it. Doesn't show a lot of uh, impact from the springs. You can tell if one of these amps has been uh, really harshly treated because the springs will bang against this and you'll get really dark uh, smudgy gray areas here and this is the, as light as I've ever seen. Inside the tank is in just perfect shape. Uh, proper impedance uh, on the uh, input transducer and the output transducer and the cables check out just fine. So whatever the problem is with the reverb circuit, it's not the tank itself, it must be uh, up in the chassis somewhere. Okay, one final bit of disassembly, and this is the icing on the cake. After my luck lately with speakers, I have undone the nuts. I have not lifted this. I have not even looked at it yet. Okay, so get ready. It's either going to be covered with masking tape, uh, be torn to shreds, something. But um, let's take a look. Here it is. Oh, man. It's just about perfect. It looks great. I'm going to have to push the cone in and out to uh, make sure it's uh, clear on the voice coil, but it looks like I finally lucked out. This looks like a really nice speaker. Thank God. No rubbing of the voice coil. The cone is in perfect shape with good, solid, firm suspension. This seems like an absolutely just excellent vintage speaker to me, and I'm going to use it. Uh, looks like I finally got lucky. Uh, I guess it was about time. Well, the cabinet's pretty well gutted. I think we've completed our disassembly here and evaluation. 
Uh, I'll have probably one or two more videos showing uh, what I go through to restore this beast. Uh, I hope there's been some interesting tips and that it's been kind of fun to watch this. We both explored this thing together and uh, I really think it's a super nice original uh, decent old amplifier. It's not a black face uh, deluxe reverb but hey I'll take a silver face. Uh, so why don't you uh, stay tuned uh, for volume two and three of this restoration saga. I really appreciate your time and interest and I hope to see you in the near future. Thanks for watching.